Hello, welcome to Hero of the Table. I'm Sean. Today I'm going to be showing off some models that were sent to me by Robert Fellows from 2D6 Wargaming. They have a new line of 6mm World War II models. They've sent me one of each of the models that they have to do a little bit of a review of. So I'm going to kind of show off the models that they've sent and kind of talk through what they've got and what I think of the models. Um, they have some Russian, some British, and some German models. They also have a little bit of terrain. So I'm going to just break these out by type and kind of go through them. The terrain that they have currently are barricades. These are just a concrete cast frame on the side. The thing that actually blocked the roadway was actually railroad, uh, the rails from the railroad. Uh, so it's a big steel piece. These are made where you have the one that's open. It's just kind of a couple of rails that are piled so you can build these along your roadway and put the rail next to it. Um, so like it's open or if you want the road closed you have the, the ones with the rails on it. I haven't done anything with these models. There's a very little bit of flash. The mold lines are pretty minimal. There's a couple that are there but nothing serious. I think they're cast pretty well. Easy to paint. This is just concrete and uh, rails so pretty pretty simple and then the the wooden one the side pieces are looks like just pieces of wood that have been sunk into the ground and then it's filled with dirt and you've got two of those and then you have some logs that would go across and are put in the middle so with this one like I said you can either model it so it's blocking the road or not and you really if you were to glue that to a base you could make it so you could slide this in and out so it would work as both so you could use it uh, sometimes you wanted it to be clear or sometimes you wanted it to be open uh, it would be easy enough to make that switch just by pulling that out and laying it there again pretty nice casting I like the different heights that they have on the uh, the wood sides of this you can kind of see that so they're not all set into the ground evenly or they're cut a little bit different it's a nice little detail for that model it's pretty simple but it's effective uh, I've not seen roadblocks like this before from other folks I'm sure there's probably some people out there that make them uh, but they can be nice for different scenarios to have these kind of things on your table next we'll take a look at the British models they have a Deacon and a Deacon ammo carrier so these are, you can see the, the barrel is bent. That's pretty normal with these. It's easy enough to straighten out. Other than that, it's a pretty nice cast. Again, you've got some mold lines there. You can see that. I can feel it with my fingernail. But it's not that big of a deal. It's easy enough to clean up. And if you don't want to take the time, I'm sure you could just paint over it and you wouldn't really notice it much. There's hardly any flash on these which is nice but so this one it's got a gun that sits on the bed of it of this truck nice nicely detailed model even the tires have some tread modeled on them. that's pretty nice and then this is the Deacon ammo carrier it's just a flatbed truck the bed of that truck has some really nice detail in it doesn't look like a lot of detail on the sides of the truck though. There's a little flash. Very little. So again, not a lot of mold lines on this either. A little bit of flash. Hardly any flash. Nice detail. Treads on the tires are cast in there. It's pretty cool. Windows are a little bit hard to pick out actually. So it might be a little odd paint in that but you can get that done no problem at all next we'll take a look at some of the Russian stuff so these are kind of neat they have uh, a variety of female models for infantry so again I don't know that I've seen a lot of that but I know that the the Russian army did use female troops in combat as you can kind of see they've got a little bit longer hair I don't know if you'd be able to tell much from the the shapes of the body so we have four female sniper models. 
We have a mortar team, has a mortar and three infantry models, all female models. There's a signal team, all females. And then we have four female medics. These are pretty small models. I mean, six millimeter, obviously. It's hard to see what makes them female. I can see they have long hair, but other than that, there's not a lot to tell. Um, maybe once they're painted, it'll be a little bit more obvious. We've got a couple of Russian tanks. These are just different variants of the T-34-76. So we have the 1940 era T-34-76. It's a nicely detailed model. The detail on it is pretty crisp. Again, no, very little flash. I actually don't see any flash on this. And then I don't see any mold lines. I don't know where the mold lines are. Well, maybe they're right there at the seam. But very little issue with that. It's a nice, nice model, nicely detailed. It'll paint up nice and easy and look nice when it's done. Then we have the uh, 1941 model of the T-34-76. This has a little bit different gun. So let's see. We'll look at these side by side. So the gun on the 41 model is a little bit longer. I'm not sure what changed. Uh, obviously I probably put on a, a stronger gun as the war progressed. It's also got a little bit different here in the back. These uh, boxes, I don't know if those are ammo boxes or fuel or what. On the side we've got these that are not there on this one. But other than that, it looks pretty similar. There's minor differences. Makes it look a little bit different. but looks cool again nicely detailed crisp detail not much flash don't see the mold lines on this as being a problem either and then the last one we have is another variant on the 1941 model this is the Urkani I'm probably saying that wrong looks like the same body but a little bit different gun. So not a lot of difference in here. Same year, just a different, maybe the shape, yeah, the shape of the turret I think is a little different on that. So very minor differences between the two of those, but they're nice looking models. And that is what they have for the Russians, these three different tanks and then the four different infantry. All right, now let's take a look at what they have for the Germans. We have a Panther M10, Panther A, a Jagd Panther, and then a Panther D and a Bergd Panther. And again, I'm probably pronouncing that stuff wrong because I'm not sure exactly how it's all pronounced. But first, let's take a look at the Panther 10, Panther M10. So my understanding of this is that at some point, the Germans took and modified a panther, the turret of the panther, to make it look uh, similar to a uh, an American M10, so they could hide it, and as the Americans approached, it would look like a friendly tank. Um, I don't know that this was a real common thing, probably not, but I think it did concern folks when they ran into those the first time that hey, that's not a friendly tank. And so again, this could be a good uh, good set of models to include in a special scenario or a kind of an ambush scenario. It would be great to have those set up uh, for the Americans rolling in on these, these tanks and getting ambushed by them. Panther A. On this one, we've got some side skirts. 
So these were added um, to help some of the protection on the tracks. These, just one sprue of it, you pop that off and they get glued to the side here. Be easy enough to cut so you could uh, model them because I think the way they're made, these are kind of individual sections that were on the side. So as they took a hit, that piece could be replaced. But we've got the turret. Barrels are a little bent. That needs to be straightened out. But again, not a problem with that. Nice detail. I like the way it looks. Kind of on the, the top of the, the hull. And there's some nice, nice looking detail there. No flash, really. Don't see mold lines. So, nice looking model there for the, the Panther A. Go to the Panther D and the Berg Panther. Panther D is just a later model of the Panther. Different gun on it. Again, nicely detailed model. Straighten out the barrel on that. Straightening barrels is a pain because it's really hard to get them straight, but I don't know of many companies that you don't get some bent models when they come. All the models that I've ordered, even ones where they're packed in a plastic case and foam inside, that still seems like some of the barrels will get bent. So it's again, nice looking model, Panther D. A little bit different gun than the A had. It's got the muzzle brake on it and I don't think the A had that. No, it doesn't look like it. And then we have the Berg Panther. This is a recovery vehicle. Doesn't have the turret on it. Um, use this to drag damage tanks back that could be repaired or whatever, pull stuff out of the way. Just a general use recovery vehicle. Again, nicely detailed. I like the cover on that center. It's kind of neat. But yeah, nice. Again, probably not used in all your games, but could be, a, you know, if you've got a mission where you're going out to recover some vehicles or just kind of have some uh, support units on the table sometimes, it'd be a nice model to include. And then we have a Yag Panther. So this doesn't have a turret. It's got the the gun is fixed to the hull. Just gets attached in there. Not sure which bent, so it's hard to tell. Let's see here. Straighten that a little bit. There we go. So put that in there. I believe the gun in the in this is actually bigger than an 88. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's a it's a big gun. Had the ability to punch through a lot of armor, so and at, and at long range. So nicely detailed. This has side skirts on it already, so they're not can't swap them out but nice detail I think when this gets painted just all that will really pop depending on how you paint it overall I think these models are nice they've got nice detail no problems with flash or mold lines but from what I'm seeing I think they look really nice uh, currently they're priced at a pound ten which is a little bit more than some other places, but they're a little bit less than, well, they're quite a bit less than like GHQ. They're a little bit more than what Heroics and Ross sells. The detail of these models is higher than the Heroics and Ross models though. Currently, this is the, the entire set uh, that they have available. Um, I talked to Robert a little bit. He plans to do uh, more, obviously. Hopefully he has the sales to continue the support of the this line 
Uh, he wants to do a whole line of World War II all the way up into modern stuff. These are 1 285th scale models. I'm sure they'll work just fine with other 1 285th scale models that you have. The website is 2d6wargaming.com. I'll put a link to that website in the description below. He is looking for a U.S. distributor. He's got some folks he's talking to. I don't know where he's at in that process, uh, but hopefully he'll find somebody for that soon. Uh, if he does, I'll try to put a link to their website in the description so you can find that as well. One of the things I really like about the 2D6 Wargaming website is the pictures of the models are very nicely detailed. It's clear to see what the model looks like. Uh, there's good close-ups of the model so you can really get uh, a good look at the model that you're purchasing. There's some of the uh, other available retailers out there that don't have the best pictures uh, or you can't really see what the model really looks like. But so that is something I really appreciate about his website with uh, these models is they all have very nice pictures. Hopefully that continues as they expand their uh, selection of models. Robert did send me these models for free. He just provided them to me and asked me to do a review of them for the channel. Uh, I thank him for sending them to me. Uh, they're nice models. I'm looking forward to painting these and think they'll be a nice addition to my army. I might have to seek out a few more of these, place an order with him and get some, uh, you know, a whole unit of these because the gaming that I do, one's usually not enough. I'm, I usually play on larger scale, so I want kind of a, a whole company worth, but they're, they're nice models and I, I think I'll have to uh, work on adding a few more of these to my collection. But it's a good start to the line. I hope he's able to expand it and I hope that folks have uh, liked what they've been getting. I know these have been available for a little bit. If you've ordered any of these models from 2D6 Wargaming, let us know what you think down in the comments. Good or bad, it's always good to hear both sides. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this and the other projects that I work on, you can subscribe to my channel. Be sure to click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. If you have any questions or comments, you can put it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.